Imagine a 12-year-old patient who has been diagnosed with cancer. The patient's parents, no doubt worried sick, take the patient to an oncologist. After examination, the doctor decides that chemotherapy is the appropriate course of treatment and gives two treatment options. The first treatment option requires a blood transfusion and has a 40% success rate. The second option does not require a blood transfusion but comes only with a 20% success rate. Now, based on the relative success rates, the doctor recommends the blood transfusion. Now, the patient and his parents, however, are devout Jehovah Witnesses who believe that the Bible prohibits blood transfusions. The parents explain to the doctor that in their religious community, people can be shunned for receiving blood transfusions, and because of that, they refuse to consent to the blood transfusion. The doctor recommends the blood transfusion the parents say no. You are called in to represent one of the parties in this disagreement. Hi there. My name is Tyler Wilkinson, and I'm an attorney with Axley Bernelson in Madison. And I'm here to talk to you today about medical decision making for minors. So how do you approach this problem? I have found that there are three things that you need to do to sort through this problem. The first thing is to understand and explain your client's legal rights and their legal obligations and the potential consequences of their actions. Now, if you represent the parents, you can advise them that they have the legal right to consent to treatment on behalf of their child, but they do not have the right to withhold consent for what could be life-saving treatment for their child. They have an obligation to provide necessary medical treatment on behalf of their child. And you should warn the parents that the potential consequences of withholding necessary or life-saving treatment could be that they're reported for suspected neglect or abuse of a child, or could face criminal prosecution if the child is injured by their decision to withhold treatment. If you represent the health care provider, you should advise them about their obligation to provide emergency treatment under the Emergency Medical Treatment and Active Labor Act, EMTALA, or the state law equivalent. You should advise the health care provider on their obligations imposed by the standard of care in the situation. And you should also help explain what their obligations would be in both the ethical and professional realm in, their, in this situation. Now, if you're appointed as the guardian for the child, you need to understand your legal charge. Do you have a legal duty to actually provide consent on behalf of the child? Or is your role solely to make a recommendation based on the best interests of the child? Now, once you've sorted through the various legal rights and obligations, the second thing you need to do is ask questions of your client. You should ask the parents what course of treatment, if any, they intend to consent to on behalf of their child, and then ask why. Is it because of deeply held religious beliefs that they're going to choose one treatment over another? Is it because of quality of life considerations? Basically, they may be shunned. Does the child share the parent's same belief? Now, if you represent the health care provider, you should ask whether the child's condition is truly emergent or life-threatening. Understand the medicine and ask whether the treatment that is being advocated for is experimental or is it something that's generally accepted in the medical community. Ask the healthcare provider about the relative success rates of the various treatment options. And then ask your client and his or her colleagues about what the standard of care requires in this situation. If you're a guardian and you represent the child, or at least the child's best interests, you should ask what the child really wants and see if the child is willing to assent to one form of treatment over the other. Now this may be difficult and you may need the help of a child psychologist or other professional to do this. Once you understand the legal landscape and the dynamics of the situation, oftentimes attorneys can find a creative solution that will resolve the dispute and advance your client's interests. The third thing to do in this situation may be the most difficult. You must be mindful not to substitute your client's judgment for what the appropriate course of action is for your own. Disputes over medical decision making for minors are difficult precisely because we are making incredibly personal decisions on behalf of someone who is legally incapable of making that decision for themselves. The decision belongs to someone else. We cannot substitute our own judgment for the real decision maker. Now in this situation with the, um, the young man with cancer, 
there likely is no good outcome, no magic medical treatment which is guaranteed to save the child. And all we can do as attorneys is help our clients sort through the alternatives and the potential ramifications, mindful that the decision of what medical treatment, if any, to pursue is someone else's decision to make. For more information on this topic, please see the article in the Wisconsin Lawyer Magazine on medical decision-making for minors.